my name is Harold. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give a short overview of the large format cameras, uh, especially relating to those who desire to use them for wet plate photography. I will not get into the wet plate process. Uh, you can search that out on Facebook groups, uh, Friends of Scott Archers 1 and some of the other Facebook forums. They are of great value uh, to you as you step out into this new venture. They will be helpful and they are very informative. The uh, cameras that I want to look at today, uh, I've got several here on this table. Uh, for the most part, they all operate the same way. Uh, the one over here is a graphic view camera. It's considered a monorail camera. Uh, again, uh, you have your, your viewing capability. The nice thing about these cameras is the majority of them come with the Fresnel bright screen, which really gives uh, uh, the uh, photographer uh, a bright area to focus on. Uh, but again, and again, all these cameras are rotatable as far as for a vertical or horizontal fo horizontal format. I have this camera up. This is actually what they refer to as a tailboard camera. In a tailboard camera, it is the back bed that drops, and then the uh, rear standard moves out. Uh, that's one of the main differences between this as well as the model rail and the other cameras. Uh, the main purpose for me to uh, in this one here is just to show you the lens. Uh, the larger the lens, the more light goes through. Uh, one of the key factors that you've got to look at though is to make sure that the, that the lens is for the format. Uh, sometimes people go out and buy a lens and they've got their bellows uh, out very far just to be able to focus. The reason of that is that the lens is more of a, for like an 8x10 size or more for uh, telephoto or portrait photography. But again, the, the uh, bigger the lens, the more light that will pass through and it means the shorter exposure time as far as the wet plate process goes. Another thing I want to point out is this is a 4x5 wet plate holder. To open it, uh, it's always open from the back. You put your plate in the back, it drops in, the emulsion will be towards the front. Uh, of course, this is all done in dark. Uh, close the lid, the back, the back door if you will. Make sure it's locked into place and then you're ready to go shoot. Uh, once you have everything set up, uh, the best way to use this is when you insert it into a camera, just don't cram it in there. Uh, hold the uh, focus plate back and it'll just slide right on in. One other thing that's important is that when you are ready to make the exposure, the dark slide comes out. Now another thing you want to be careful of is that you just don't try to cram in the dark slide. Uh, two reasons why. One, you'll ruin and possibly break the, the uh, dark slide itself and you'll also possibly damage the uh, the opening here the slot if you will that this fits into ideal way is angle it in turn slide and push in that'll help uh, your uh, uh, equipment to last a lot longer uh, as you care for it uh, it's just a, a great method one of the things that I do is I can modify holders. This is a six and a half by eight and a half um, fill plate holder. Once you'll notice here, it says on this little label, it says this side towards lens. So of course, this is the side that you're going to place towards the lens. Again, same process in re, uh, inserting that is to angle it in. Now the back side, like any other, uh, so the ones I designed have a plate with a spring on it. This helps hold the either the metal or the tin, whatever you're using, to be flush against the film plane. Uh, for 8x10, 5x7, of course 6.5x5.5 cameras, uh, I provide an insert so that, for example, here you can do uh, 4x5 photography. 
You can also get some for five by seven. So anyway, that, uh, the insert uh, will fit in here. You'll put your plate in here. There's some tabs that'll keep it and hold it in its place. You'll put the insert back in and then the dark slide goes in finally and you're ready to go take your pictures. Let's talk about cameras here. Oh, one other thing. This is an 8x10 uh, developing box. Uh, it's, it's wood. It has an insert that's acrylic. Uh, they all have your dippers. These come in different sizes. Uh, I can also uh, custom size or custom make different sizes. I made for a customer. Uh, they were doing uh, 7x11. And so I made a tank uh, insert uh, for their processing needs. This tank is used for uh, fixing. It's clear. Uh, totally comes out like the other one does. Uh, and again, it's used for fixing. The other thing I didn't point out is all the tanks that I sell uh, have an armature that comes back so that you can lean this back a little bit. All right, let's look at the cameras. Okay, here I've got an 8x10. This is a 6.5x8.5, 5x7, and a 4x5. Essentially, these cameras all operate the same way. The big difference is each again will have a learning curve. Uh, the 8x10 will require uh, a lot more handling. They're, they're a little bit heavier. Uh, it's going to take a lot more chemistry. So those are all things to keep in mind. Beautiful format. I'm uh, working right now on an 11 by 14 with a holder for it, but that's going to be a little down the road. Anyway, these all operate the same. Um, each have their own lenses. Uh, smaller lenses uh, will uh, let less light in, but again, the weight factor is also involved. Uh, so what I want to do Let's look at this 5x7, it's just a little bit larger. Here's a 4x5 uh, Corona. As far as the, model, the models, there's brands. Uh, some of the Coronas are high-end. I really like these. These are popular. Uh, the next one, a 5x7, this is a 2D. These are nice, heavy-duty cameras, uh, uh, as well as the Ansco and the Agfa. Those are also very nice, heavy-duty cameras. Uh, the difference, again, you're talking the weight factor, uh, but again, the durability uh, is, is great with these different, with the uh, 2D, for example, Corona. Uh, some of the Gunlock or, and Corona cameras are ideal. Uh, we'll be offering a Seneca camera. Seneca originally marketed the, uh, an amateur market. They are nice cameras. Uh, a lower, lower pr price point, which is really, really nice. Okay, let's look at this 5x7 here. Again, they all have a drop bed. You're going to want to lock it in. When you uh, do the locking in by the uh, knob here. Uh, for focusing, again, there's two standards. There's the rear standard and the front. The rear standard is where you'll have uh, your plate, you, you can focus which is you're going to get a dark cloth that'll help out a lot. You can get those on eBay and other sources. Uh, these can be rotated. All you do is there's two little clips here. You're just going to raise the two, pull this back. I'll try to demonstrate that for you. Uh, it gets pulled back and you rotate it. Make sure it sets in to those pins on that, uh, those two tabs on the bottom. Make sure they set in there. And there you go. You're ready for the uh, format. Uh, that you want, vertical or horizontal. Anyway, uh, the rear standard pretty much is just going to stay locked in. Uh, some cameras have what they call a rear extension rail. Nice add-on. Uh, there again, more weight. Uh, in all the years that I have collected and used photography, and just to let you know, I have uh, operated cameras from 35 millimeter on up to 12 by 20. But I have never, I think only one time over the years have I ever used the rear extension rail. The rear extension rail uh, allows you to get more what we call bellows draw. The downside is as uh, the bellows get lengthened, you lose light.
and therefore you've got to compensate for your exposure. Anyway, for focusing, I recommend using the front rail. You're going to call it, uh, not the front rail, but the front standard, excuse me. Uh, focus it uh, uh, again, adjust it, and then you can lock it into place. Another nice feature about these cameras is they have a rise and fall. So instead of having to move the whole camera once again, you're just going to adjust the front lens board and uh, again refocus. Uh, this just helps you instead of having to redo the whole camera. Uh, some cameras also offer you uh, a locking or a front standard so you can slide it or pivot it uh, right or left. Others have a little option that you can uh, uh, tilt the lens uh, because there's a, a, a little bars that allow you to do that then you can lock it into place. Uh, Krona has that nice feature uh, on some of their cameras. Um, as far as if you're too close to a subject, in other words, if you've got an 8 inch lens uh, which is for 5x7 or 9 inch lens which is for 4 by, uh, excuse me, 5x7 format, you're not going to be able to be two feet away from a subject. You're going to want to be around seven to eight feet away. Uh, otherwise, your bells are going to be way out like this and you may not be able to focus anyway. The image will still be blurred. So for, um, for close-up photography, uh, again, uh, if it doesn't get fall into focus, you need to move your camera back or <laughs> add in that extra extension rail if your bells are already out. But for most uh, landscape, uh, most photography that you're going to be doing for a wet plate. Uh, this is about where it would be in focus uh, uh, in, in regard to uh, the uh, lens, focal uh, measurement. Um, anyway, uh, th these are, uh, they're great, they're ideal uh, for focusing for photography work. Remember too that your image will be upside down. So when you first time uh, people get behind these cameras they go, wow, my image is upside down. That's photography. Uh, so that'll be uh, a learning curve in itself. So that's basically an overview. Uh, these cameras work. Again, all operate the same way. Lenses uh, factor. If you get some lenses that have a little bit of separation on the outside, just for your information, don't worry about it. Uh, if lenses are, are foggy and have a lot of weird stuff inside, kind of shy away from those. Uh, but if it has separation on the outside edges of the optics, uh, that's still a nice lens and you'll be able to use it. If you've got any other information, you can contact me via email, hgstacy2 at gmail.com. I hope this has been at least a little bit of help. Uh, and information for you. Again, the biggest things in uh, as far as the cameras go in, in respect to wet plate photography is lenses. Uh, the bigger the lens, uh, the less light. Uh, the, the downside is they're heavier and you're going to pay a lot more uh, for a larger lens. Uh, another factor to look at is uh, actual wet plate lenses are really nice. You've got uh, some, um, some of the old uh, uh, larger barrel lenses such as Harrison uh, for example, uh, Holmes Booth and Hayden, those are beautiful lenses. Uh, in buying those, and I will be offering some in future with some of the cameras that I uh, repair and post on uh, eBay, uh, you're going to be competing against collectors who want those lenses uh, as well as users. So that's why a lot of times you'll look on and you'll see the prices going crazy and they are crazy right now uh, is because of uh, the, the, the name, brand, and era of the lenses. Uh, C. Harrison for the most part uh, did the daguerreotype lenses but also they made a, a several uh, wet plate era and uh, I have, that's what I'll be posting or listing uh, with some of the cameras. Uh, and they're nice lenses. Uh, the other factor, the bigger the camera, the more chemistry you're going to use, and again, the greater weight. Well, I hope this has been informative. 
Uh, I know I'm not the greatest speaker, but hey, uh, it's about the subject matter uh, that I'm uh, considering. Again, hdstacy2 at gmail.com. Thanks.